besties welcome back to my channel or hi my name is Stacy. if you're new here for today's video we have yet another holiday release and that's the new pat mcgrath mothership mega celestial nirvana palette and she looks like this in the pan and this is essentially like pat mcgrath's rainbow palette it's very exciting there's lots of colors to play with in here for today's video i'll show you how i got five different looks out of this palette yes five as you can see there's just a lot of variation to choose from here from both colorful to very neutral looks including the one on my eyes right now and i also tried to make the looks a little bit more wearable a little bit on the softer side so if you're someone who likes to kind of play with color but not like go too crazy or too intense then this video is for you and after the application of my five looks i'll show you guys the swatches and then i'll wrap up my final thoughts at the end so if that sounds good to you then just keep on watching but before we get into it don't forget to like comment and subscribe if you want to see more content like this because it really helps out my channel and it would really mean a lot to me now let's just get right into the video First, I'm going into the shade Desert Divinity, and I'm just using that as a transition on the top and the bottom lash line. I'm taking the shade Altered State because I want this to be a green-inspired look, and I'm just putting that on the outer corner and deepening it. Here, I'll just show you my process of how I blend out the edges of the green. Next up, I'm taking Guilty Opulence, which is like the antique gold, and I'm just packing that all over the lid. And then as usual, I blend out all the edges with a brush. Next, I'm taking the shade Golden Angelica, and I'm just using that to highlight my inner corner and also my bottom lash line. Lastly, I took a little bit more of the green to deepen the outer corner a bit because I wanted a little bit more of the green color to shine through. Here's the finished green look using all the green tones in this palette. I feel like it turned out really pretty. It's actually pretty wearable for a green look, even though I wouldn't consider like an emerald green or like a really yellow gold to be wearable, but I think it turned out really pretty and it's more like a wash of color. So for the second look, I'm starting off with Desert Divinity once again, and I'm just using that as a transition. For this look, I want to go more the red warm tone route, so I'm taking Flame Fatale and I'm putting that on the outer corner, and then I'm just blending it out and also adding some to the bottom lash line. Then I'm going into the shade Auburn Allure, and I'm just using that to deepen the outer corner a little bit more, and this is like a really pretty ruddy brown shade. And then I just blend everything out to get that watercolor effect. Next up, going into the shade Starlit Copper, and this is like a really orangey copper shade and I'm just packing that all over the lid. Then I'm taking Heavenly Bronze and I'm placing that in the center, kind of like a halo eye, just to give it that really gold foiled effect. Then I took Cosmic Champagne and used that as the inner corner highlight. But then I felt like that champagne was a little bit too cool tone for this look, so then I went into Golden Angelica and used that on the inner corner and also bottom lash line to kind of warm up the champagne. So here's the finished second look. I think it's perfect for fall. It's very warm toned and it kind of reminds me of like the fall leaves. It's like this golden foil, pumpkin spice kind of shade. I think it's actually pretty wearable. For the third look, we are once again going into Desert Divinity as a transition. I'm doing this for every single look, so. Now I'm heading into the cool tone section, so I'm taking Fabulosity and I'm using that in the transition just to make it a little bit more purple. And this purple is actually a little bit more on the pink side, so it kind of makes it more wearable. Then I'm taking the same shade and I'm packing that on the outer corner as well as the inner corner to make a little bit of like a watercolor halo eye. Then I'm going to the shade Violet Vixen, which is a little bit deeper and more cool toned of a purple. And I'm packing that on the outer corner of both the top and the bottom lash line just to add some more purple there. And just blend over everything with a fluffy brush. Then I went into Venetian Peony, which is like that pink shade, and I put that all over the transition. I'm not sure why, I think I just wanted it to be a little bit more pink. And now we're getting into the fun colors. So I went into Aquarian Dream and I packed that on the middle of the lid for the halo effect. And then I blended out the edges with a tiny bit more purple just to bring some of that purple back. I went into Lunar Lavender and I placed that right on the center to kind of brighten it because I felt like the blue was a little bit too bright for me. So this also kind of muted it down and made it more pastel and icy. And I added the same shade to both the inner corner and the bottom lash line just to brighten it. Then I went into the Nocturnal Navy shade and I used that to line my lash line as a shadow liner. And I almost forgot this part, which is why it's after the mascara. And here's the finished cool tone blue galaxy or nebula look. I actually really like how this one came out because for being an unwearable look, it's still on the more wearable side just because I used everything in a more like watercolor way. So it's just a lot lighter. I feel like this palette would be really good for Halloween coming up just because you can get so many different colorful looks out of it and match them to your costume. Okay, for the fourth look, we're starting off with, you guessed it, Desert Divinity once again. Then I'm going to the shade Venusian Peony because I wanted to go the pink route for this look and I'm just placing that on the outer corner and also blending that along the bottom lash line. Then I took the shade Eternal and More and I packed that all over my entire lid. And I have to say this shade is actually a lot deeper and more pigmented than I thought just from looking at it in the pan. But yeah, it's super pretty and super impactful. And then I took a little bit of the shade Lunar Lavender and put that on top because I wanted to cool down the pink and make it a little bit more icy. Then I went into Cosmic Champagne and put that as the inner corner and also on the bottom lash line as usual. And here's the finished fourth look. This one is super wearable. It's just like a pink everyday look. And since it's super light, it's very natural looking. 
I also think this look would be perfect to wear in the spring because it reminds me of all the spring flowers. Okay besties, we're finally on to our fifth and final look and we're starting off strong with the same desert divinity. After I applied it all over really lightly as a transition, I went ahead and deepened up the outer corner with the same shade. So I just added a little bit more on the top and the bottom lash line. Then I took Bronze Infatuation, which is a super pretty smoky bronze shade that has little sparkles in it. And I just packed that all over the lid with my finger as the main lid shade. And then I blended out the edges with a fluffy brush to get that seamless blend. Then I went to Cosmic Champagne and tried to use that as my inner corner highlight. Then I realized it was too icy and cool tone for this look, so I added a little bit of Golden Angelica on top to kind of warm it up and create the perfect neutral champagne. And for the very last step, I went into Nightfall and used that as a brown shadow liner and just lined my eyes with that. So here's the fifth and final look, what do we think? It's the most neutral and most wearable out of all the looks, like you could wear this every day or you could wear it going out at night. It's very versatile. This palette definitely has the range because as you saw, I did a bunch of colorful looks as well as neutral looks. So comment down below which one of the five looks was your favorite. Now let's just get into the swatches of the Celestial Nirvana palette. And I'm gonna kinda like briefly describe them to you as I'm swatching because some of the colors appear a little bit different in the pan than on the eyes, or at least on my skin tone. I'm gonna swatch in order of the sections of this palette since there's like three six pans essentially. So I'm gonna go like this. First up we have Nightfall. So this is Nightfall. I would say it's like a chocolatey charcoal brown. It's definitely on the cool tone side. And also it doesn't go super deep, being that this is like the deepest brown in the palette. I don't personally mind that, but if you like like a super black liner or something, or like an almost black liner, you're not gonna get that with this. Like it's just a deep brown, but you can still tell that it's like very clearly brown. It has almost like a little bit of a purpley undertone as well. But it's just a really nice cool tone brown. Next up we have Cosmic Champagne. It appears a lot lighter on the skin than in the pan. I think it does have like a slightly deeper base as you can see like when it's not reflecting it's a little bit deeper but it's super reflective so it basically just looks like a white champagne on the lids this is very light and bright and i would say it's actually a little bit too cool tone to go with like the warmer tones in this palette it looks like very silvery almost in comparison to the warmer tones i'd say this goes well with the cooler tones in the palette next up we have the shade bronze infatuation this is a really pretty smoky brown shimmer and i would consider it pretty neutral it has like a cooler brown base but a gold glitter to it that's what I have on my eyes right now, and I, I will say it's smokier than it appears in the pan because the shimmer is quite reflective, so it makes it appear lighter in the pan, but it really has like this pretty medium to deep base, which gives it like a smokier appearance, especially if you have a lighter skin tone like I do, but it's not like super deep or anything. I was just surprised because it was a lot smokier than I expected. And also this is the most glittery shade in the palette, like it has these micro glittery sparkles. So it's one of my favorite shades in this palette since most of the shimmers are like true metallics, like smooth metallics, but this one has extra sparkly glitters. It's really pretty if you wanna add some glam to your everyday looks. Next up we have the shade I use the most, which is called Desert Divinity. The shadow is really smooth. It's like a creamy chocolate brown, I would say. It's the lightest transition shade in this palette. I would say it's not super light. I think it's super versatile because deeper skin tones can use this as a transition shade. It's pretty neutral, I would say. I like that you can also like sheer it out or build it up. It is quite pigmented though, so if you have a fair skin tone like me, you literally only need like one tap into the pan and that's like enough to use as a transition. And then you can like use a couple more taps to kind of like deepen the outer corner. So I like that it can be used as both a transition and like a lighter deepening shade. Okay, next up we have this emerald green called Altered State. This green is super pigmented. It's like a true emerald green, matte. But yeah, I have no complaints, it's very even. Jewel tones are not my favorite types of shades, but it is a very pretty shade. Okay, then lastly in this section, we have the shade Guilty Opulence. So here's the shade Guilty Opulence, and this is kind of like an antique gold. It's like this metallic gold that has this antique green undertone to it. It obviously goes well with the green, and you saw it in my green look. I wish that she just made this more of like an actual olive color, because like these types of antique like yellow, green, golds just like kind of clash with my skin tone. I think it does complement the green, but I personally would have liked like an olive tone better because I like olives and I think an olive shimmer would be super pretty. Maybe it would look good on olive skin tones, but it kind of like makes me look a little bit sickly. Now moving on to this middle cool tone section, we're starting off with the shade Nocturnal Navy. This one I'm pretty impressed with the swatch. It's very even and smooth. And yeah, it's just like a true deep navy. I think using navy shadows as like eyeliner is really pretty because it like looks almost black, but it still has that like blue tinge to it. And yeah, you can see that this shade is deeper than that deep brown. So 
I guess this is the deepest shade in the palette. I think it would look good with any like cooler tone or blue leaning looks as you saw in my bluer look. Next up we have the shade Lunar Lavender. This Lunar Lavender shade is actually really pretty. It's like an icy blue silver I would say. I would say it's more blue than lavender but it does have like a little bit of purple to it. It's just like a smooth metallic. I wish it was like a little bit more shimmery sparkly because it's not super impactful. It's like a really pretty color. It looks great on the inner corner for like any icy cool tone looks. And also I even used it as a temperature adjuster in my pink look as you saw earlier how it like cooled down the pink so i do like that you can kind of use that shade to like mix and match with other shades to like cool them down okay next up we have the shade eternal amour okay so here's the shade eternal amour and this is a really pretty pinky kind of rose gold shade but definitely like it's very pink like a petal pink type of shade this is also one of the most impactful shimmers in here it also has kind of like some micro glitters like similar to this shade but yeah it's a lot brighter so this is one of my favorite shades in the palette i do want to point out that this eternal amour shade is definitely not cool toned at least on my skin tone it's like a warm pink. So I personally would not have put this shade, at least like not in this section. It goes well with this warm red section. And it looks cooler in the pan, but on my skin, it's like, as you can see, it's like this warm, fiery pink. It's still one of like the sparkliest in this palette, which is why I like it, but it's not cool tone. So I would have wanted a more cool tone pink. Next up, we have the shade Fabulosity. This purple actually swatches very smooth because a lot of times purples are really patchy, but this is like a great purple formula. And also I would say this is a warm purple. Like it's almost magenta and it definitely has like a very pink undertone to it, which I like because when you blend it out, it turns more pink. That's just something to be aware of because it looks a lot pinker on me than like in the pan. Again, this is a warm tone purple. So like these two shades, I wouldn't consider cool tone necessarily. Next up, we have this shade called Violet Vixen. Okay, sorry the swatch got a little bit messy, but this is the shade Violet Vixen, and this is more of like a brighter royal purple. Very pretty, and it goes pretty well with the blues, as you can see. And then lastly in this section, we have the shade Aquarian Dream. Okay, and here we have Aquarian Dream. So this is again a true metallic, but it's like this true aqua blue shade. It's actually super pretty because it's quite bright, and I haven't tried many blues this bright. Normally I wear like sheerer blues, but this is super pretty and I also think this would be really nice on the inner corners just like as a pop of color and just like keep the rest of the lid very neutral with some mascara and it would just like be a really pretty pop of color. This kind of aqua shade just reminds me of summer. It's really pretty and I feel like it's pretty unique for blues. Like I haven't seen many blues this specific shade in palettes. Okay, now onto the red section of this palette right here where she calls it the warm tone section. The first shade here is called Auburn Allure. Okay, so this swatch got messy because I was trying to even things out, but yeah, this is actually a really pretty auburn shade. It's like a reddish, ruddy brown. It looks a little bit like more subdued on the skin than in the pan, which I like. Like it's a little bit more muted and brown. So this is actually a really nice like warm tone deepening shade for any of the warmer tone looks. This is the shade Golden Angelica. Okay, sorry my swatches are getting messy, but this is the shade Golden Angelica and this is a really pretty golden champagne. I would say it looks a little bit less gold on my arm than in the pan. It looks like it would be like a very yellow gold in the pan, but it's actually more of like a champagne gold. I actually really like this shade. It goes well with any of the warm tone looks as like an inner corner highlight. I like to mix this shade with the other icy champagne shade because you can see this one's a lot more white. And this one has like a warmer undertone and that's what i used on my inner corner today to make like the perfect like neutral champagne because the icy one is like very white and almost like silver and then this one is a little bit more gold so then when you mix them it creates like the perfect like neutral champagne anyways yeah this is a really pretty very useful shade in the palette not as gold as it looks in the pan next up we have the shade heavenly bronze so here's the shade heavenly bronze and this shade is also super pretty it's like a bronzy gold shade definitely more on the warm tone side but it's not too orange of a bronze like a lot of bronzes being very orange this one has a little bit, but it's still like more neutral warm, I would say. It's actually super pretty because it has like a deeper base color, but it has a really strong gold reflect. And this is like the flakiest shade in the palette, but not flaky in a bad way. It's like kind of like a gold foil effect. And when you press it into the swatch, all like the flakes kind of flatten out and it just gives you like this really high impact, high shine formula. So yeah, this is one of the shiniest metallics in this palette, so I really like it. Next up, we have this shade called Flame Fatale. I do really like these names. Here's the shade Flame Fatale. Now, I would say this looks more red on the skin. It has a little bit less orange in the pan. It looks like an orangey red. Like, don't get me wrong, this is definitely a warm red, but it doesn't look as like fiery red orange as it does in the pan. I would use this sparingly. I'm not the biggest fan of red. It's a very nice, like evenly pigmented warm red shade. Okay, next up, we have this shade Venusian Peony. Okay, here's the shade Venusian Peony. And this is like a true, again, like petal pink. It is more cool tone actually than the petal pink shimmer that I kind of described earlier because it's more like a true pink. I would say it looks warm tone in comparison to the cool tones and then it looks 
cool tone in comparison to these warm tones. So that's why I feel like it's pretty neutral. This one does have like a white base to it, I would say. It's really pretty and I think it goes well with like these reds and also like with these pinky purples here. And then lastly, we have the shade Starlit Copper. Okay, here's the shade Starlit Copper. This is a true metallic. Yeah, it's like a true copper, like it's very orange kind of a little bit red. It's like really good with these warm tones here. And it's also good, like as you saw earlier in my warm tone eye, like it's very warm and orange on me. I definitely prefer mixing this with like, the more bronzy shade because it kind of like neutralizes it almost a little bit. Okay, here are all the swatches together. So as you can see, it's kind of like a rainbow palette almost. Like it has basically every color of the rainbow. Definitely more jewel tone. It has like these rich tones here. It has a lot of different textures because some of the metallics are more flaky, some are more sparkly. Some are more just like smooth satiny. None of these are like the Blitz Astral Special Formula from Pat McGrath, but that's the same like with every holiday release. Okay, so now let me wash off my arm and I'll come back to wrap up my final thoughts on this palette with you guys. Okay, just to quickly wrap up my final thoughts on this Celestial Nirvana palette. So overall, I think this palette is a really good bang for your buck if you haven't tried Pat McGrath before, but also even if you are like a Pat McGrath collector, like I kind of am, like definitely this palette brings something unique to the table because it has like these extra colors that Pat McGrath, at least like recently, has not been doing much. I know a lot of people complain about how she doesn't do enough color, especially for like a brand that kind of promotes more artistry. A lot of her palettes are just like pinks and gold and that kind of thing, which I personally like. This is definitely pleasing all the color lovers, but it's also pleasing people who like neutrals with a twist, like I do because as you can see, you can get like a very neutral, everyday wearable look as well. So it's a very versatile palette in that aspect. Again, Pat McGrath set this up so like you have three six pans here. They're arranged in these columns like this. So every two columns is like one palette essentially. So I think that's really great, especially for beginners or people who just don't really know how to come up with cohesive looks. It's like right there in the palette for you. So I do think that was a great way to kind of make this palette more approachable. Also, I want to compare it to the holiday palette from last year, 2021. This was the Celestial Odyssey palette. I'm not gonna swatch that one. I do have a review up on my channel, but I just wanna like briefly show you the comparison. They actually do look kind of similar, but I will say I think that last year's was still more neutral. Like it does have these pops of colors, but besides like, let's say like these and like these, it's a quite neutral, like pinky rosy palette. So in terms of personal preference, I actually prefer last year's. It just so happens to be that this is more neutral than this year's and then the pops, like I tend to like a little bit better. So that's the tea on that. Also last year's package was like the reflective kind of lacquery packaging. I mean, I think it's plastic, but it was made to like mimic her regular lacquer packaging, which I thought was prettier. And then this year's is just like cardboard. You can kind of see here. I mean, this is just like a minor detail, but it's less aesthetically pleasing to me. It is smaller than last year's though, a little bit because it doesn't have the Pat McGrath logo like in the middle. So yeah, if that was something that bothered you, I do like that this packaging is pink though, like, cause I love pink. In terms of personal preference, this palette is not my favorite because the pops of colors in here are jewel tones. And that's probably one of the colors I use the least. This probably was not the smartest decision for me, but I do think it was worth it to review for you guys and also like play around with the palette. And I will still continue to use this. Like there's enough wearable colors in here, but to be quite honest, I probably won't use like the brighter shades, like this green, these reds, but I do like that I have access to these in this palette because I actually don't own those shades in other palettes, if that makes sense. But I do really like this blue though. It's very unique and it's very like summery. Yeah, so overall, if you like a palette that can kind of do it all, you can do the neutrals, you can do warm tones, you can do cool tones, you can do pops of jewel tones, you can do brighter summery pops. Like it can basically do it all. It has like all the colors of the rainbow. So if that's your vibe, I think this is definitely a good bang for your buck in that sense. You get the 18 shades for $82, which is a steal for Pat McGrath because normally her palettes are like 10 shades for 128. Definitely a steal in that respect. The biggest thing I think you have to consider is if you're like me and you don't like jewel tones or like super colorful tones, I don't think this palette is necessarily worth it. Also, if you're like me and you prefer like micro glittery shimmers or like more sparkly, most of these won't give it to you. This pink one has sparkles and this bronzy one has sparkles and also this bronze foil, I think is like very foiled. So those are like my three favorite shades. The rest of these are like these smooth satin metallics. So they're not the most impactful. So overall, not my favorite Pat McGrath palette. I will say it is a really good companion palette to her other motherships. Cause I feel like for a lot of my looks, I wanted to add more glitter, but there's no like glitter in here. If I wasn't filming this review, like just using this palette, I would go into other Pat McGrath palettes and use her Blitz Astral shades and probably top off each of my looks that I did today. Like that's how I would probably wear it. So yeah, that's just something to keep in mind. I do think it is a very good addition to anyone's collection, but just make sure that you actually like these colors and all the caveats that I stated before. So I think that's about all my thoughts for today. I hope this video was helpful. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you like this video and comment and subscribe down below if you wanna see more content like this, cause it really helps out my channel and it would really mean a lot to me. And I'll see you all in my next video. Bye.